Hey guys, this is Pineapple and this is a Kometsu anime video. So welcome back to the anime onlys that have been missing out on videos for the last week or so. In this video, we'll talk about episode nine and 10 of Kimetsu no Yaiba, which features both Tanjiro and Nezuko's battles against the powerful demons, Yahaba and Susamaru. You can follow me on Twitter at Vogel Pineapple to keep up on everything going on with me and you can subscribe and click that bell icon to keep up with everything going on with my channel. With that said, let's get into the video after that intro. Hit it! So at the end of episode eight and at the very beginning of episode nine, Yahaba detects Tanjiro and his new demon allies using his strange eyes, and it's revealed that they were actually hiding thanks to a technique that uses paper seals to hide things. Miss Tamayo's ability usually keeps her business private, but thanks to Yahaba having a demon technique that has to do with eyes, I'm sure it didn't really take much work for him to find them. He looks over to Susamaru and has her start going wild. Now Susamaru is absolutely insane and starts launching her ball in into the room, destroying things all over, until it finally knocks off Yushiro's head. Seeing that they're in an extremely dangerous situation, Tanjiro orders Nezuko to stay behind him and protect Tamayo while he steps forward to take on Susamaru. Right as their fight is about to begin, Susamaru reveals to Tanjiro that they were sent to kill him when she points out how his earrings match their targets. If you recall, Muzan sends them after Tanjiro after he notices Tanjiro's earrings, and that's when we get this mysterious flashback to someone else with those earrings looking extremely ominous. There's something about these earrings that Muzan doesn't like, so they have to be erased from this world. Susamaru throws her ball back and forth in the room directly at Tanjiro, and instead of knocking his head off, it gets stopped in midair by Tanjiro using the Breath of the Water 7th style piercing raindrop. I recently did a video explaining all of the moves in the Breath of the Water style, and it also features a bunch of information on the stories and various users of the style, but some of the info in that video is manga information, so keep that in mind if you do end up clicking on that video to learn all of the techniques. Susamaru takes off her jacket and gets serious, and this is when all of her different arms are revealed, each holding one of these powerful and heavy bouncy Tamari balls. She starts throwing them around and tearing holes into Tamayo and Yushiro, while Tanjiro struggles to dip and dive between them while cutting them in half. He's having a really hard time because it seems like the balls are changing direction in midair, so even if he dodges, he has to dodge again and it's almost impossible to handle. Yushiro puts a tag on Tanjiro's head that allows him to have a demon sight, and that allows him to see the different arrows that are causing the balls to switch directions in midair and making them incredibly difficult to dodge. Nezuko runs and finds Yahaba in a nearby tree and kicks him to stop his interference with Tanjiro's fight. In that split second where Yahaba isn't assisting Susamaru, Tanjiro flashes into the Breath of the Water third technique, Dance of the Rapid Current. He absolutely sweeves through all of the balls and cuts them down, and then cuts off all of Susamaru's arms. Dance of the Rapid Current is really beautiful because it allows the user to move extremely fast, and the trail of water that follows them and ultimately rushes into the enemy's wounds after the sword is cut through them is awesome. Now, if you recall, in episode 8, we learn that Tamayo's goal is to try and make a cure for demonism by studying Kibutsuji Muzan's blood. She thinks that if she can get his blood or the blood of a demon closely associated with him, she might be able to cure Nezuko. Susamaru and Yahaba are obviously stronger than a normal demon, so they've got to have a decent bit of Muzan's blood inside them, leading Tamayo to speculate that they might be members of the 12 Demon Moons, which you'd be familiar with if you saw my video explaining what the 12 Demon Moons are. As Nezuko continues to attack Yahaba, she gets dust in one of the eyes on his hands, and he slams it, sending her flying with one of his arrows. At the same time, Susamaru is getting stronger and stronger. She regrows the arms that she had cut off in less than the blink of an eye, and she tries to attack Nezuko and Tanjiro, but they barely manage to dodge. Tanjiro and Nezuko split up and each take on one of the demons, one versus one. But they end up switching which demon they're fighting, so it's Nezuko versus Susamaru now, and Tanjiro versus Yahaba. In Tanjiro's fight in episode 9 against Yahaba, for the first time ever, someone was able to break the interval line that appears when Tanjiro makes his sword techniques happen. Yahaba managed to do this by sending Tanjiro flying backwards with his arrows, and he starts sending him flying all over against the trees and almost against the floor, but Tanjiro saves himself with the Ape style waterfall jar, giving him a cushion to his landing, but in the manga, he actually hits his head against the floor, so it's, it's pretty funny. They left that out of the anime, but I thought it was pretty funny that they left that out. 
Meanwhile, Nezuko is struggling against Susamaru. She tries to kick one of those demon balls, but it goes through her leg and sends it flying off. Yushiro also comes in and has a little moment where he serves the fade, the Susamaru in the anime. So I thought that was really awesome how they added that in. And the demons pretty much seem set on killing everyone here. So he pretty much has to fight and he's angry about what they did to Lady Tamayo. So it's completely understandable here. But ultimately, Nezuko is the only one that's gonna be able to put up a fight against this higher level demon. Now, because she kicked the ball and her leg came flying off, Tanjiro is seeing Nezuko's torn open leg right in front of him, and he has to really think hard about how he's gonna proceed because none of his techniques are working. Yahaba sends out tons of arrows at Tanjiro to wrap around him and tear his limbs off, but Tanjiro manages to get out of it by slipping out of his haori and running up a tree and kind of flipping to kind of offset the power of the arrow. Finally, thinking of a plan, Tanjiro uses the six style twisting whirlpool and edits it a bit, turning it into twisting whirlpool current. This version of the technique gathers all of the arrows together and he switches into Breath of the Water technique number two, Water Wheel, but this version is Tanjiro's own personal horizontal water wheel. This sends the arrows back at Yahaba, smacking right into his head, knocking it off. Now in episode 10, Yahaba begins dying and screaming all sorts of curses and phrases at Tanjiro, covering his body in arrows that even poke through him. Here is where Tanjiro has to put together a lot of the things that he's learned to save himself from getting literally flung around and getting pulverized. He switches between striking Tide to go up a wall to keep it from smacking into him, and here he goes through water wheel, piercing raindrop, water surface slice, waterfall jar, striking Tide, finally ending up on twisting whirlpool before he gets slammed into the ground for a final blow. All of those sword techniques extremely drained his stamina, but it stopped his momentum enough to let him live after he hits the floor. But his hand does seem to be broken, and it doesn't seem like he'll be able to use his sword. Susamaru keeps trying to kill Nezuko with those powerful Tamari balls, but Nezuko powers her leg up, realizing how much strength she needs to kick them back, and she powers up even more to put the game to an end, almost knocking Susamaru's head off with the powerful kick of the ball, leaving Tamayo and Yushiro shocked. She shouldn't be this powerful, but how is she this strong? It doesn't make sense. Now remember, this isn't the first time that we've had a demon question why Nezuko is so strong, because when they fought against the Swamp Demon, he noticed that she was in her base form and she was already incredibly powerful without even using any demon blood arts or like, you know, these the special abilities that the demons have. We haven't even seen Nezuko start using that or even really transforming to make herself bigger and, and using that to increase her strength. All the demons are confused because she's not doing it any of that. She's just kind of like in her normal, you know, everyday walking around form and she's really just easily handling them. So either she's a special kind of demon or Muzan for some reason gave her a lot of his blood, but it's not affecting her mind state like it would with others. So there's a big mystery surrounding Nezuko, but keep in mind that this is something that the story will address as it goes on. Tamayo uses this moment of insecurity to talk trash about Kibutsuji Muzan and uses her activity on Susamaru while he was freaking out. And that leads to Susamaru saying his name. Now, if you remember the Swamp Demon, that's something that demons absolutely aren't supposed to do. Because Susamaru says Muzan's name, the demon's curse activates and Muzan's cells turn into arms and body parts and start tearing Susamaru apart from the inside and devouring her, pretty much deleting her until all that's left is an eye. The eye is proof that Susamaru and Yahaba weren't actually 12 demon moon members, but their blood might still be useful for Tamayo's research on Nezuko. As Susamaru is dying, Tanjiro slides over her ball and mourns the death of even more lives. Ultimately, Tanjiro and Nezuko decline to split up even though Tamayo wants to keep Nezuko there for research, and the two leave Tamayo's place for now, heading onto the road for the next mission, which will finally bring us to the next member of our party, Zenitsu. What will this sparky swordsman bring to the table? Find out by watching Kimetsu no Yaiba episode 10, or just wait for my next video on it because I'm gonna be talking about him because he's one of my favorite characters. That's all I got for you guys this week, but I'll be back with more. Peace.